the Central Weekly, a weekly podcast from the Central Podcast Network. You've got host John Henninger. You're the host. That's Jared LaCrone, the host. I'm just like this other guy on the other side of the table. Hostess with the mostess. Hostess? Golly, Host- we just shots fired. Uh, what? <laughs> no. no. Is the hostess a woman? Yeah, right. But did I just call myself a woman? Oh, you're the host. Oh, regardless. Hey, everybody. Glad you're here today for this podcast. What episode number is this, Jared? This is, you told me <laughs> episode 66, which is really weird. And we're really hot in these microphones, but that's okay. They can turn, turn us down if they need to. All right. Here's the thing. We are in central summer here in the central family. It is post-Labor Day. One of the f- most favorite times of the year. Yeah. And we're in a drought here in southern Illinois. Did you know that? I did not know it was, it was, it was officially when, a drought. When's the last time you mowed your yard? Uh, Monday. I mowed mine Saturday, but I don't. there's no rain in the forecast. Hmm, it rained. You know, last night, I don't want to get way off topic here, but last night. We're already there. Uh, last night, I was on my way home, um, and like between the church and my house, it like rained really hard. Really? But it did not rain at all at my house. And it did not rain at all at the church. I saw. That's a spot shower right there. That's exactly what it that's was. That's a spot shower. So we're in, uh, kicking it off, and it's, uh, do your boat noise. <laughs> it's boating season here at Central. <laughs> um, here's the cool thing. We're also, we're going to be talking about the sermon, uh, like we always do. And here's the cool thing. We're talking about the faith of Noah and his boat obedience. Mm-hmm. Yeah, boat obedience. That's a creative title. Yeah, and I think when your next rap rap album, that's what you need mm-hmm. to call it, boat obedience. Boat um, Or your rap name. Hmm. Hey, John Henninger, a.k.a. Boat obedience. <laughs> <laughs> Bo is your first name. Uh-huh. Ode. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And here's the thing. We're going to bring in uh, a special guest. Okay. Uh, so the last couple weeks, you know, we had the, the series where we looked at missionaries and we had some great stories, did a lot of Zoom calls on that. Mm-hmm. Then we brought it into the Central Family and we asked some staff and some pastors to sit in and give us ministry updates. But the core of what the Central Weekly is all about is telling the stories of people in, around, and through the Central Family. Okay. And that's what we're going to do in this episode. What? For the next six weeks, maybe even longer, we're going to be bringing in people in, around, and through the central family uh, just to tell their stories, their God-given, God-shaped stories of how God has moved in their life, uh, in their past and in their current. So I'm super excited. We're in talks with a lot of cool people uh, that I got some I, you know, you know, phone calls made uh, last week, but our first one is Shauna Bullard. Shauna. Yes. Shauna Bullard is going to be week one. She is always, she's been somebody that I've wanted to get into the podcast studio for quite a while just to hear her story because mm-hmm. she did amazing. You probably weren't there because I wasn't there because it was a woman thing. Um, the, they had the kept event like two summers ago uh-huh. where she, she spoke. spoke and yeah. she did such a good job. I remember why. I think that was, that was online. I think I watched that mm-hmm. online. Um, but she did a good job. She's very well-spoken and um, she's just, she's a leader she's that of who she is. Mm-hmm. Um, and I say this in the interview later that you're going to listen to. Uh, we have a lot of leaders that listen to this podcast. Um, did you know that 70% of podcast listeners are men? No, I did not know I that. Know. I want, and I, I would, based on the encouragement we get on our podcast, I would say the same thing about the Central Weekly. Hmm. I, a lot of dudes are watching or listening to the really? Central Weekly. Probably not watching. <laughs> I mean, they could on YouTube. Did you know we're on YouTube, John? I heard that. Yeah. I mean, if you want to sit there and watch a graphic. watch for, anything. Right, yeah. <laughs> put it on in the background. But you do have a lot of people that put that in the background uh, while they're working. So mm-hmm. we're super glad that you're joining us. We're super glad to talk about no, uh, Noah, Nona, uh-huh. Noah and Shauna Bullard after the break. If you want to zoom ahead to go to her, that's fine. Uh, but we're going to talk about Noah and his obedience. Mm-hmm. So here's the fun thing that you started off your lesson with that Kay. I have also a tube story. Do you? I, two bean, two bean story. It didn't go a lot. You can tell. Nice. I'm not a boat guy. Okay. I love boats. Okay. Speed boats, yes. Okay. Because we had a friend, the Poffs. They were at, if you're familiar with Effingham, okay. it's Lake Sarah. Uh, not your Sarah, because it doesn't have an H. Uh-huh. So it's a, it's a, um, it's not a Christian. I bought a boat from people who lived on Lake Sarah at one really? point. Mm-hmm. And I test drove the boat on Lake Sarah. Was it Jack Poff? Did you buy it from Jack Poff? I don't Poff? think so. Okay. I really was, don't know, actually. actually. shot in the dark. I can't remember. But he was like, he was, he, so Lake Sarah is a Did resident. Did they own an 18-foot celebrity with green stripes? I think it was a red boat. Okay, then it wasn't them. But he, so Lake Sarah is a residential boat, or lake. I don't uh, know if there's different okay. I don't know. Because you can, you, is there residential around, um. No. Rin Lake? No. Is there a residential lounge? Was it Carlisle? I don't know. Okay. But yeah, for example, Sarah, Lake Sarah yeah. definitely is. Right. Um, and he was the guy, his company made, I don't know what, again, what this is, all that reinforcement that you would put around 
the lake. Mm -hmm. So you can put your yard right yeah. there. Yep. Like that metal or whatever mm -hmm. that thing is. That was his company. Nice. So that was I mean, kind of cool. So he was literally like the lake guy. Yeah. Jack Poff. Uh, but he was the person we would always go on his boat. My parents, we Emily was my friend. She was in my grade. And they Ooh, had two girls. Emily. No, it was always just <laughs> friends. Uh, but we they had a boat dock. And we I remember there's one of the famous videos of my dad is him jumping off the off the dock. It's like a 30 foot dock. That sounds really high. Is that mm, high? That does seem high. You have the top. Yeah. That 30 is too high. Too. Okay. Yeah. But again, retrospect. But here's the, I love, <laughs> I'll tell my story in a second. Your story, though, the busiest lake or uh, busiest oh, beach. Oh, yeah. I mean, I remember we were tubing out there in the lake. And I, I mean, I, I've had it happen many times where, like, you know, it starts to just tug on your shorts a little bit or whatever because, mm -hmm. you know, hold, whatever. But for whatever reason, just the way it caught that one time, I've tubed all my life. And for whatever reason, that the way that it caught that one time, it just yanked the shorts right off. And I, there I was literally streaking through the water. You could have let, let go. I could have, but... <laughs> I mean, golly, why? I mean, if it's between my shorts and the defeat of falling off a tube. That's true. Yeah, I that's mean. That's true. That's the difference between you and me. You're a lake guy. You're a boat guy. <laughs> I would have let go and found those shorts. Retrieved the shorts. But, no, I lived the rest of that day, and uh, I remember I wore uh, just a, a towel wrapped around my waist. felt like, I mean, speaking of Bible times. <laughs> so here's mine. I think it was probably Jack Poff. He was ahead. Of, we were tubing. And, and so I got popped off because, again, I'm weak. I don't know. You got popped off of Jack Poff's boat? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> that was not intentional. Wow. But it's Poff. P-O-F-F. -F. Poff. Poff. Okay. But anyways, so here's the thing. I f in the lake, and I'm, okay. I mean, I'm not a great swimmer, but I can tread water. But then, all of a sudden, horse flies. Oh, no. Start swarming me. And I'm trying to tread water. They're landing on my head. I'm going under, coming up. He doesn't even know I've fallen off yet. Wow. He hasn't figured that out. He wasn't being a good sailor, mm. captain. Yeah. He's still going this way, and I'm freaking out because I was probably like eight. So mm. I was still new to swimming, mm -hmm. but that literally was one of the most traumatic moments of my life. Wow. Was having feeling like I'm drowning, mm -hmm. being bitten by horse flies, mm -hmm. and falling off the tube. Because again, I fell off. Yeah. I wasn't supposed to fall off. Yeah, I've got a lot of boat stories. I mean, <laughs> a lot. You and Sarah, when you first married, you had that boat? He, I had a boat when we first got married. Uh -huh. um, like in my life, I've, I've owned myself. I've owned three boats, okay. but um, you know, my parents had boats growing up. So I mean, we just spent a lot of time on the water. And yeah, yeah. Where, was that? When did you find out about Rin, being so close to Rin Lake when you moved down to Mount Vernon? Like, mm, I don't know. Probably pretty quick. Pretty quick. You're yeah. like, okay. Where's the nearest lake? This is me. So here's the funny thing. I mean, you pick for boats. This boat series that we're looking at. We got six boat stories. And you start with the biggest boat first. Yeah, right. Uh, Noah. Yeah, and the, the ark. ark. And the ark, right, yeah. <laughs> have you been to the Ark Encounter in Kentucky? Uh, no, I have not. But actually, uh, honestly, like we shot some videos for this. And I thought, well, yeah. maybe this first one we'll go shoot there. But that yeah. I makes mean, a long way for that. And we're, our family's planning on going in September. We're going to, I think the kids are going to love it. Um, oh, that'll be not, awesome. Not only, You're going to go to a creation museum as well? That, well, creation museum is 45 minutes north, and you can get a ticket. With our kids right now where they're at, I don't even think they need to go into the museum. They're gonna. There's so much to go outside, too. Mm. But the Ark Encounter, and then you can see Kane that night. We're going to stay one night at that uh, Hampton Inn right close. We already have our September Kane plans. the group? Kane the group is playing a Christian concert at the Ark Encounter. I mean. Okay. But it is, again, Kane. they... I, they sh I know it's their last name, yeah. but they're literally Christian artists with one of the biggest villains in the Bible. But they're awesome. They're probably, they could be my favorite right now. They, uh, my girls, they are. But it's like naming like your Christian band Jezebel. <laughs> if yeah. your last name was Jezebel. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, let's get into this because um, there was a lot of practicality with this because a lot of people know the story of Noah. But sure. you really did a good job of hitting home a lot of these points. And it was funny that you did. You had two pairs. I did, two, two by two. Two pairs of points. Uh, your first one, the ark represents a choice and a challenge. Right. Um, and then you look at it for us, it's the same way. We need to walk the walk and we need to carry out the calling. Right. I so like it, that a lot. It, it's just really, I think it's really... Um, it, Noah didn't have to do it. Nope. I mean, he didn't have to take it on, but his faith he in God. To live. I mean, <laughs> he could have just thought, well, maybe God's not being serious, or he could, you know, but he's walked with God literally for 500 years, and he's the only person on earth considered a righteous person. And so his past with God gave him confidence to accomplish what God had called him to do. Yeah. And so he made the choice to accept the challenge that God had put before him. 
Do you think the body aged the same way when we lived 800 years? <laughs> Obviously not. But did you get to 80 and you were old for the rest of your life? You know what I mean? Yeah. Did the wrinkles like... Did, I, I think that aging it process... keeps getting wrinklier? <laughs> yeah, you just, that dude's all nose. <laughs> <laughs> those can be big. Yeah, I know. Um, but seriously, think about it. I mean, there, that aging process had to be like lengthened. I would imagine. You would think so. You would, I would imagine. So when you're really, so that, but that would mean when you're like 200, you still look like a teenager. Mm-hmm. Again, fascinating stories. Again, this is a fascinating story. Did you ever watch the Noah, the, the like the, the Hollywood adaptation with, with uh, Russell Crowe? Uh, no, I it was not. crazy. It uh, really was. But I did see um, the one with uh, Bruce Almighty. What's oh, that? Follow Evan, Evan Almighty. Almighty. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I have a kid yeah. on my bus named Evan, and yeah. I think of him every time because yeah. I call him Evan Almighty. But I'm like, that's probably not the best. Yeah. Uh, but the thing is that I loved about this because you think about how I mean, how are they? First of all, they're housing these animals, and again, I want to see what the Ark Museum, Ark Creation, whatever that it what it says about this. But they even in the Hollywood adaptation, again, there's no biblical evidence for this. They drugged the animals mm. once they got on they gave them like this put them basically in a coma so they could they didn't have to be fed they didn't have to be watered that whole 40 days and 40 nights i just thought that was a little fascinating side note right wow but i thought i mean think about it what i mean what are you doing with predators and all of that and stuff and maybe basically right right when they came in they gave smoked them up (laughs) i mean and and, and maybe that's maybe that's what it is i just i think god could have done that i was gonna say i (laughs) highly doubt that god is i don't know i mean god is causing the lion literally to walk up the ramp. <laughs> I think you, you can know, figure then, out the process. Boy, once he crossed the threshold, it's going to be <laughs> chaos. The, your second point was too, really good, too. The ark represents his protection and provision. Mm-hmm. And I, this is really where it hit home with me because I loved how you said about God builds people, not boats. You, can, you said it a little differently. Yeah, there. right. And it's kind of, it's kind of a takeaway from... Um, T.D. Jakes talks uh, at one point about like God doesn't build tables, but this is kind of the same thing. You know, I mean, God doesn't build buildings. He doesn't build cars. He doesn't build boats, Mm -hmm. but he, I mean, he could, I mean, he's God, he can do whatever he wants, Mm -hmm. but I think usually the way it works is the way it worked with Noah. You know, I mean, God had something that needed built. And so he built a person and enabled that person with the ability and opportunity to do something. And, um, and so that, that's how God usually works. And so that's our, that's our place in the picture. You know, that's our, uh, spot in the, in the storyline. We are really the executors of the will, uh, that comes from above. Yeah, and I, I mean, that's the question for you, and hopefully you're left with at the end of this lesson, is what is God calling me to, and what is he, what do I need to carry out? What do I need to be doing? And again, kind of backing up a little bit, I love your point about how much we, too often we let our response be dictated by other people's opinions of us. For sure. Noah was not doing that. If he wouldn't have, he would have given up. And, and you know, I mean, it just seems like one of those things, I would think... The closer to completion it gets, the easier it is to be confident in what you you're would doing. Think so. But at the beginning, when you're cutting down trees and clearing out land to build this boat that's almost yeah. 500 feet long mm-hmm. in the desert, and everybody's laughing, literally the world is wicked at the time. You know, I mean, yeah. like there's there's nobody there yep. to say like, yeah, we'll support you in this. Yeah. But um, yeah, I mean the the God's God's plan for you, God's mm-hmm. purpose for you mm-hmm. is not dependent on anyone else's opinion of you. Yeah. Cuz I mean that's but that's how often we so make those our decisions in life, you know? When we we're trying to decide between a career, sometimes we decide that based on what other people think that we're good at right. rather than what we feel called to go into. Mm-hmm. Um it was a good kind of conversation Eric after we talked about this. He talked about calling and how a lot of people don't even know what that is. Um, in their life. And so when we use the word calling, sometimes they're a little apprehensive about really leaning into that talk Mm -hmm. because they just, it's a kind of a foreign aspect for that. And that's Mm -hmm. my prayer for a lot of people that are going to be listening to this sermon is that God reveals to them what that plan and that purpose is. Mm -hmm. Noah, it was so obvious to him what his calling was that he tore down trees and built an ark. I mean, and it would took years to do that. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times you're not going to see what you're calling, you're not going to see the fruit of your calling sometimes for a, quite a while. Maybe never. I mean, mm-hmm. hopefully you do just because, but what I'm say, trying to say is that even when we're not getting what we think we're going to get in the calling, we still need to be obedient. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? I th- yeah, I think so. so kind of like what you said about Carbondale. Right yeah, now, there's right. still a lot of questions about Carbondale. Mm-hmm. We don't have all the answers right now, but right. We, do knew, we do know we need to walk out in faith. Right. And a lot of times, we, if we don't have the answers or we don't have the right opinions from people, we don't walk out in faith. And I think it's really important to note that like, whatever your specific task is inside of the kingdom, whatever God assigns you as yeah. like, you know, this is your job to do, or this is your place in the, in the whole thing. It starts with making the choice to accept the challenge yeah. to follow Jesus with your life, yep. to allow him to be the Lord and savior of your life and build a life that honors him. That's where it all starts. He's yep. not going to assign you something, mm-hmm. uh, some, you know, a Noah like task mm-hmm. inside of his kingdom. Yeah. If you've not made the initial choice to follow him. Mm-hmm. And that's really cool. Cause that you said that cause, uh, Shauna in our conversation coming up, she's going to talk a lot about her making her own choices in her own and owning mm-hmm. her own faith, mm-hmm. owning her own faith. Yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah, that's so right. And, I think again that your one of your final points was if God leads you to it, God He'll give you everything to do it. Mm-hmm. You, again, you said it more ad- more eloquent yeah. than I did. No, no, that's it. Uh, yeah. More of a ra- uh, rhythm than a rhyme. Mm-hmm. Feel the rhythm. Um, but it really is true, and I think that should give you confidence in your calling. Didn't you have a sermon about that? Like last year? Uh, we, we've talked about yeah, that. But, uh, I've I've said that yes, before for sure. But definitely have confidence in it. If you're called to do it, have the confidence because He will give you everything that you need to fulfill that calling. Yeah, because really, I mean. Confidence in the calling is nothing if you're not confident in the one doing the mm-hmm. calling. Yep. Um, and so knowing, like Noah, walked with God for 500 years before this thing even became a thing. And so you might be uh, you might be in the portion of your life where you're just walking and gaining confidence in the mm-hmm. one who does the calling for mm-hmm. when the calling point comes, you can walk with a greater confidence. Yes. Does that make yes. sense? No, yes. Yeah. It really does. And again, there's so much things. Because when you said, you know, a, a obedience in the questioning, because again, God's equipping us for sure, but that's his calling on our life. Mm-hmm. And he's going to do everything he in his power to make it happen. Mm-hmm. Um, even if we don't feel equipped, right. he'll, he'll, he'll give us the way. And it might be a couple years long. It might be in a way that we don't think it, it's going to be. Mm-hmm. Um, that's the thing. Noah, I doubt, thought, hey, uh, if okay, great, God, you're gonna save salvation. You're gonna save some people and start fresh. Great. I don't think his first thought was he's gonna flood the earth. No, right. <laughs> so yeah. again, what we think our calling would be might not be what it truly is. Sure, is another point. Yep. So yep. good stuff. Again, nice. again, nice. Nice. I, don't know. I need to get the sound effect. So boats next week we're gonna be looking at um, Jonah. Jonah, and he's there's a boat wreck mm. and i think you got your paul one's gonna be a boat wreck too a boat wreck yeah paul no and shipwreck no well yeah well does it wreck or do they just throw them off and they leave them they throw them off yeah the storm them. there's no wreck. Ca- the storm calms as soon as he i got a storm and a wreck confused <laughs> it's yeah. the water and it's a whale of a true tale okay let's uh i'm gonna okay Nothing. again we're recording this on a friday okay i'm gonna uh keep tally marks on on jokes and puns mm. and uh, next episode exo 667 mm-hmm. i'm gonna tell you how much you had in this one no okay and All then right. we're just gonna keep track we're gonna tally jokes and puns for the rest of this series i mean it's the kind of thing that really anchors your soul there's tally <laughs> I mean, it's a subject you really want to tackle. And there's another one. <laughs> you even won. There was even one at the beginning where you said, well, I didn't even realize one? it. Yeah. And, and then so, Thursday, you're like, somebody pointed it out to yeah. you. And you're, so then you emphasized now it. Now I will all for, weekend. yeah, the rest of the weekend, officially. And officially, we're going to switch subjects just a little bit and we're going to bring in a special guest, Shauna Bullard. And really, I mean, Shauna's been a big people, big person in your life for you and Sarah. She's a good friend of Sarah's. Yeah. Um, again, got lot, lots of wisdom there and lots of wisdom that she's learned just recently. Yeah. Um, and just, again, this is a good conversation about owning your own faith, a spiritual heritage, like the generations, uh, sermon spoke a lot to her last week. We're going to talk a little bit about yeah. that. Um, but again, and if this is something you, you know, encourages you, let us know. Uh, my email is Jared at central now.com. We, I spell it correctly, the biblical way. Cause I was, uh, Noah's, I think great grandfather in the Bible, not me, but the word, the name, mm-hmm. my namesake. Jared, J-A-R-E-D. Oh, wow. That's where you can email. Yeah. If you have problems with my, the way I talk, Jared at centralnow.com. <laughs> but we're going to throw it over to Shauna right now, but we'll be right back after this. Thanks, guys.
And we're back with The Central Weekly, and we're here with a very special guest. That's right, a guest in the studio. We have one and only Shauna Bullard. Shauna, say hi. Hello, Jared. So, Shauna, this is going to be fun, because like I was telling you earlier, you are one of the first guests in the room that's not a staff member or a missionary in like 12 weeks. Oh, my Lanta. So, you're starting a trend that we're going to be doing through this Boats series that we're in. And really, it's Central Summer, so it's kind of fun, and I'm excited. And this really is the core mission of... The Central Weekly is to tell stories of people in, around, and through the Central Family. And you've been around the Central Family for quite a while. We won't. We. I promise. In this conversation, we won't talk too many years. Okay. Because. Okay. You promise. No, probably not. I probably shouldn't (laughs) promise. So, Shauna Bullard, thanks for sitting in. Um, This we and we've been talking about getting together to do a podcast for quite a while. Yes. Um, Really, one of the first things that I heard your story was you did uh, kind of a talk at a KEPT event. That yeah. was probably two years ago, right? Yeah, it really was. Yeah. And your big thing was was your mom, mm-hmm. the one and only, mm-hmm. Marsh Mannion. Oh, the best. And I think we're going to talk about her. Yeah, okay. uh, But we want to hear your story, kind of how where you started, how you got into the Central Family, and really what your growth has been like that. And then, of course, we're going to ask the question that we ask all of our guests at the end of the Central Weekly. We ask them, how has God been working in your life lately? Oh, wow. Okay. So you ready? Yeah. Buckle up. Here we go. Hot seat. Yes. All of the things that we're going to say. So Shauna Bullard, tell us, get us started. Tell us a little bit about who you are and what you are doing right now. Okay. Well, right now I'm sitting here <laughs> talking to you, right? Um, but I would say I work a lot. I hang out with my kiddos a lot and um, I'm going to save. Like, I feel like that piece is really relevant to that last question yeah. that you're going to yeah. ask. But um, right now I just enjoy deepening my faith. Mm -hmm. I love the walk that central is on right now and Mm -hmm. it feels similar Mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, finding, I think maturing as Mm -hmm. a person, just as much as a Christian and as a mom and as a friend and all of those. So, um, it's been good lately and I'm excited to be here. Yeah. I hear this is my, my perception of you when we first started knowing each other was businesswoman, Sean, because you were, (laughs) you're always, you were at, uh, we, I, we kind of shared the similar, the hospital that we were at. I was in a different department, not even really was it contracted in. Yeah. Uh, but that's where I first got to know you and you've always been, kind of an executive level yeah. in, a, in a lot of areas in this community. Yeah. Um, and so you've led the charge in a lot of areas. And it's really neat that you're bringing this in because a lot of our listeners are small business owners, um, executives in their companies. So I think it's really neat that to hear your perspective, especially as a woman in the yeah. f- kind of the fields that you've been in. And it's really heavily on relations. Um, and relationships is a key thing, but it's almost those business relationships and leveraging them to the best of their ability. So if I'm completely wrong on that, you can, you can, we'll mess this whole thing up in our conversation. No, you know what, what I do, I I am so blessed to have the opportunity to do what I do for a living now Mm -hmm. because I specialize in exactly Mm -hmm. what you just said, relationships. I am able to teach people, coach people how to sit down with other people who have resources and ask them to support their mission. So I teach people how to fundraise, but it's a cool thing. It's not, you know, we're not twisting people's arms for money. People have resources. They want to be able to help. Mm -hmm. And I teach people how to, I connect the dots and that's relationships. So let's start, let's start that right there. Let's, let's start there. Tell us what you're, what you're doing right now. Okay. In terms of career. Career right now. Then we'll get into family and past. So I am technically a fundraising consultant. Mm -hmm. And what that means is that I teach people how to fundraise at a relational Mm -hmm. but transformational level. Yeah. Okay. So what does that mean? It means that we're not looking for smaller amounts. We're interested in those. But when we have a relationship and we sit down with someone and we know what makes them tick and we know what's pulling Mm -hmm. on their heartstrings, then we can connect with them in a powerful and a meaningful way. And that's where transformational donations come from. Yeah. People move the needle. They move the needle for these nonprofits, their Mm -hmm. missions, with their generosity. Mm-hmm. And it's you a work, win-win. Win-win. And you work with a lot of not-for-profits, right? That's, I work solely okay. with not-for-profits. Yeah. Okay. Helping them to raise money that they need to further their missions uh-huh. through relationships with other people. Yeah. And that's the thing. Marie and I have talked about this because I don't know if you've read The Blessed Life by, mm-hmm. um, yeah. oh, I'm going blank. He's a Dallas. Oh, people are probably screaming at their, their phone right now. <laughs> It'll um, come to you at 3 Dallas pastor. Yeah, I will. <laughs> but this Blessed Life is all about like God has those resources are out there. Mm-hmm. And it's not that we're not, again, there's nowhere in the Bible where it says that the money is the root of all evil. It's the love of money is the root of all evil. You are and so right. And God has put money in right places at the right time for the right people to use to expand his kingdom in a variety of ways. And, and, and again, we need to be spiritually minded, yep. but also spiritually wise. 
Correct. in the way that we do that. And this is just kind of being wise with what the resources that we that are out there. Yeah. But using leveraging them in the way that best makes it kingdom building possible. Absolutely. And then being good stewards of those funds, you know, on the other side, it's a, mm-hmm. it's the cycle of being a donor, being, you know, working with people who are able to to just absolutely change the world for the better, mm-hmm. you know? And then we're our ultimate goal, right, is to lead people. It's a, it's it just feels so stinking cool because it is pulling you back to the relationship that matters the mm-hmm. most. Mm-hmm. You know, like we are teaching people how to be better yeah. people. And what does that mean? Furthering their, you know, mm-hmm. or even bringing them to a relationship mm-hmm. with Christ. And you have two boys. I have two boys. How old are they now? Oh my goodness. So um, Graham is seven going on 45. Yeah, he's tall too, right? <laughs> he's so <Yeah>. tall. <laughs> yes, he's tall. He's wonderful. Um, and Ace, his little brother, he is four going mm-hmm. on. Four. He will mm-hmm. be five soon. I remember when Ace so was born because I was impressed by that name. Yeah. Did you think of it? Well, so um, we, his father and I love uh-huh. sports. And uh-huh. so um, Ace is a term in golf. It's yeah. a term in tennis. It's a term in lots of different sports. Mm-hmm. And we just really like that. And yeah. he is an Ace. Oh, yeah. my Lanta. <laughs> yeah. That's fun. Yeah. So let's go back. Yes. Okay. So now we've talked a little bit about the here and we'll get back into that. Mm-hmm. But let's talk about where'd you grow up? Uh, kind of go into that, how, I think the Mount Vernon area. Yeah. Uh, but then kind of how faith played a role in that. Did you grow up going to church? And I'm just going to set you, you go. Yes. Okay. So I grew up right here, like right here. My mm-hmm. dad's family, actually, uh, his grandfather was a mayor. We have been here since like the beginning of time in uh. Mount Vernon, Illinois. And uh, my mom's not from here or she wasn't from here, but um, I grew up mainly just my mom and I, um, my sister is a little bit older than me and she moved out kind of early. Uh And, um, my mom, she was absolutely the most amazing Christian woman on the Mm -hmm. face of the planet. And my best friend, she is my earliest memories and Mm -hmm. my earliest memories really are of central. We, um, my mom applied. So she, she stayed at home with mm-hmm. me when I was little. Mm-hmm. Um, and then whenever I went to school, she mm-hmm. decided to get a job. She needed to, mm-hmm. um, make some income. We didn't have, we couldn't, we didn't have two nickels to rub together. And so she, um, she applied for the job here at central for a secretary. And I remember her coming home and talking to me about it and that, um, she came in and it was a big boardroom full of like mm-hmm. men, you know, mm-hmm. sitting around and, and she walked in and cracked a joke like, mm-hmm. perfect. <laughs> just, and she said she was one of multiple applicants. She said there was no way she was going to get the job. Yeah. And I remember when she got the phone call and that is a pivotal moment in my life. And you remember that? I remember that because huh. she was so surprised that she was going to get it in our whole, our huh. lives. I mean, it was a 180. Huh. We were all of a sudden immersed in a church where we, you know, she was part of the staff and mm-hmm. uh, she was hired <laughs> to be the secretary. I remember Randy Steele and Drew Grounds yeah. first days, like yeah. she was their secretary. Oh, and so, them all yes. that paperwork done. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> so we all like, they were, I look back on it now and realize that they were like my age, oh, you know, that yeah. I am now yeah. and yeah. they were growing up too. They were maturing yeah. and, um, you know, so I, from that point on, I feel like I lived here. Mm-hmm. I played ball in the gym 24 mm-hmm. seven. I walked here, you know, after I got out of high school and, you know, I would, my mom would come up here and work on Saturdays and Sundays and, mm-hmm. you know, like, and I would play in the gym and mm-hmm. uh, Jamie Allen and I used to have free throw contests together, you know, so this church is it for me. Mm-hmm. Like it is how I was brought up. Mm-hmm. I, um, there was a while, I would say, whenever I was in college, mm-hmm. I think it, it, high school for sure yeah. and college where yeah. I took a good step away um, from my faith from, but my mom always had that just woven in, mm-hmm. you know, and it was, mm-hmm. it was when, when James talked about generations. Yeah. Such a good story. Oh, my Lanta. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it, it just so many pieces touched home with me because uh-huh. she was steady through mm-hmm. it all. Mm-hmm. And I always knew that it was there, but it wasn't until I had my boys and, you know, went through mm-hmm. some really rough times losing my mom that mm-hmm. faith was where yeah. it was at. So, yeah. you know, I did central for me. I've been here through it all. I'm embarrassed. I'm not embarrassed to say, but I've been here since I was five and, um, through the building campaigns, mm-hmm. through Kid Depot, mm-hmm. like intimately, because yeah. I knew what was going on with yeah. the building campaigns. And you know, like I was in the church office and Randy yeah. sell, you know, like all these different. So, um, I love this. I love this ministry yeah. and seeing it grow and mm-hmm. 
and being able to be a part of that. And so, I mean, that's it. it, it and well, let's mention that just real quick because it is kind of in the forefront of a lot of listeners' mind mm-hmm. is these building campaign. And it was neat that what, what, uh, how John said about how did the different ones. I mean, you were involved in the 1990 mm-hmm. and you played ball in that gym. I oh, wish, yes. Gosh, I wish we still had a gym. <laughs> Me um, too. <laughs> but Kid Depot was needed <laughs> yep. more. Yeah. Um, but you were there with when we built the new oh, worship the center. Architects, everything. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah and yeah. to have your mom, because here's, I remember, so I came on staff 2015. Maria was 20, 20, or was 13. So she knew Marshall oh, a lot more than I did. I loved your wife. <laughs> and yeah, we could, again, we, we'll, we'll yeah, probably come back. Put a pin in that. <laughs> but it's, it's, it was neat to be around there because um, just the kind, with the Kid Depot, Maria kind of inherited a lot, yeah. lot of that from the other Marsha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, going into children's pastor. And that was, it's, it is, it's so neat. I'm excited about these next 10 months because yeah. it is so neat. It is stressful. But it is just exciting to be around something new and fresh and literally building something from scratch. Yeah. And I think it's going to be fun tearing stuff up in the worship center and putting new stuff up and yeah. p- new, doing new stuff in Carbonell. And it's neat that you've those and they you see 10, 10 year segments. Yeah. Um, you really do. Um, and, and that's you know just what? pretty cool. Yeah. You know, and I think being around for a lot of those and especially being intimately involved and, you know, just having kind of a, um, a, a cooler view than a lot of people had yeah. the opportunity to have. Yeah. You know, a lot of times that I think that there were, there was, there's always questions and yeah. sometimes there's fear. And you, you know, don't get your questions answered all the time. Is, yeah. And mm-hmm. change is scary no matter what it is. Yeah. And so many what ifs can come to the table. Mm-hmm. And this leadership has always had such a way of trusting mm-hmm. God and trusting the path. And, yeah. you know, the elders lead this, this church in such a powerful way. And, all that to say, like it's 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 like the field of dreams almost. You know, like if you build it, they will uh-huh. come. And John but says re- that in his yeah. sermon. Oh, y- this yes. weekend <laughs> with but Noah. Like, I remember, I remember the the fear mm-hmm. and the rebuttals that would mm-hmm. come. And you know, like what if we don't? What if the mm-hmm. money doesn't come? And what do we do here? Yeah. And you know, like and oh my Lanta, here we are, ten years later, mm-hmm. twenty years later. We need more. Yeah. Like yeah. we've got to grow here. God yeah. is good and God is faithful, and the people that work here are so gifted by God to mm-hmm. outreach and to reach more people. And it's cool to see. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So let's talk about those. I'm going to go back to, I don't want to call them wayward years, but what, what would you call them? College years. Oh, my Lanta. Yes. Wayward years is pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> just and Growing up. Cause yeah. that's, here's what's, here's what's funny. Cause just hearing you talk about this. Yeah. I mean, the amount of staff we have now compared to what we had when you were there, mm-hmm. you were probably one of the few kids. I mean, you had the Henniger, Clan. I remember the, the day. I guess the, it, I should say the Allens. I remember I'm, the sorry. day the Allens came yeah. to Central, yeah. and it was his first day of work. And because were, were there any other the kids office. there at that time? Um, you know, there's a few you of us Barbie, that are still around, like Wes Neal. Mm-hmm. Um, he and I grew up together. Mm-hmm. Uh, Trevor and Phoebe. Like mm-hmm. we all kind of grew up together mm-hmm. in youth group. Mm-hmm. But in terms of like who was at the church, yes. That it was, was me. Yeah. <laughs> and that's what's crazy now is because, I mean, we've got 35 staff now. Yeah. And, well, part-time and full-time, but there are so many kids that are here in the office oh my uh, that are just hanging out. And it's just, I mean, again, it would be great to have a gym. But it's just, <laughs> it, it is funny just to think of little Shauna running around from office to office, You're running from running Randy to around. Jamie's. Yes. Uh, <laughs> that's just funny. And here's what's, ex- I mean, and here's the reason why I go back to the wayward. I mean, I have five kids now yeah. growing up. We're building this faith into their hearts yes. and kind of take me back. What were some things that you, maybe your mom told you, didn't tell you was quiet about, but also very vocal about in those times where maybe you were not, maybe not questioning your faith, but not putting it in the prominence that you have now. Yeah. Does that makes sense. Yeah. You know, um, she was just a phenomenal individual in that she never shoved anything down my mm-hmm. throat. And my mom's one of the things I think I respect the most about her now is that her life was not easy. Mm-hmm. And I don't think a lot of people knew that because she mm-hmm. was here and she loved fiercely. And mm-hmm. she was, you know, like she, she, the reason why she came and worked on Saturdays and Sundays is because her office was inundated mm-hmm. with people all mm-hmm. week. Mm-hmm. Counts like going to her yeah. for counseling because yep. she was just phenomenal. And she would come home and and life was hard. Mm-hmm. And she was consistent mm-hmm. and she was compassionate. And like, so I recently started realizing that I needed to hear Lord the Lord more. Mm-hmm. So reading, mm-hmm. you know, like actually reading the Bible, mm-hmm. being, you know, like not praying as much, listening. And yeah. so that's getting in the word. And so I've been using my mom's Bible. Mm-hmm. Mm. And I have so much 
I have so many questions as to why this verse did you highlight Mm -hmm. when you wrote this at the top? Oh, how your heart must have hurt. And, Mm -hmm. you know, like just, oh, my Lanta, the the magnitude Mm -hmm. of a woman that she was Mm -hmm. and how she encouraged. And it was that silent consistency, not silent, but like she was firm in her faith. Yeah. And she, you know, I was here. If I was home from college, I was Mm -hmm. here. And Mm -hmm. she was accepting of me. And she never made me feel as though I was a failure or Mm -hmm. as though I were worthless or as though Mm -hmm. the door was shut. And that led me to understand that God's the same way. Mm -hmm. Like accepting and waiting for us Mm -hmm. to turn back and waiting for us time and a time and time again, we can do it. You know, no matter how far we've fallen, no matter what we've done, that silent yeah. waiting there. And that was her, you know, like mm-hmm. she was so, so some really powerful things I learned from my mom, the power of tithing, mm-hmm. you know, we had nothing. I can mm-hmm. remember times we had nothing and we still tithed, mm-hmm. you know, like that was something. Yeah. Cause that's usually not, that people say that's the first thing that go like, yeah. Oh, I need to cut back. So I need to make sure I need to hoard that a little bit more. So then, cause yeah. things are tight, but yeah. You know, and it's crazy I have, principle. I have stepped out in faith on that mm-hmm. and Oh, the richness that comes from tithing and trusting in in the Lord through that. And that was something that I learned from her. And, you know, I remember her always being in that Bible, you know, Mm -hmm. always being in that Bible. And I can Mm -hmm. remember thinking, why? Mm -hmm. Like, it's not, it's not helping. Mm -hmm. (laughs) What you're doing is not helping, but man, it was. Cause I look back, I look at back at people, you know, John Henninger is one of her favorite people, mm-hmm. Sarah, you know, mm-hmm. Maria, she invested so much in so many of us mm-hmm. and to see yeah. how people flourish when they yeah. have, you yeah. know, cheerleaders behind mm-hmm. them. We used yeah. to call her a prayer warrior of all mm-hmm. prayer warriors. Mm-hmm. And she taught me that, you know, like I found myself kind of going into that role as well. Mm-hmm. And so those are the, you know, like she just was the best. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's, and that's, it's, it's neat to see how your, her faith inspired you, but now it's your own faith that is moving you into the new yes. directions. Yeah. And I think that's a good example of like, Hey, I mean, when you spoke about your Bible, the Bible, like you're using her Bible and yeah. then, but, and seeing what she did and then now building off of that. And that's yeah. my prayer for my kids is that yes. they see my faith, they inherited that faith, but yeah, then they make it their own and it looks completely different. We were praying for, uh, Amelia and I were praying for some healing for Maria. She just had some chest congestion. And I mean, here I am. I was the dad praying out loud. Yeah. But then here's Amelia just praying so hard, so heavy right underneath me. Yeah. And it's like this, I mean, this and is what I... And they will humble you, yeah. won't they? Yes. yes. <laughs> and there's times where like, wow, I thought I was, okay, yeah. you're leading me now. Childlike faith. In a faith. lot of ways because of that childlike faith. Because yeah. when we grow up, there's so much that we put on faces that we put on, you know, and their weight. And a lot of it is, it's just from experience has, has broken us in some ways. And yes. so we're, we've got wounds that maybe those younger haven't got developed. And I'm not going to say yet because they might not at all, but be, their faith is just so much more pure and genuine mm-hmm. at such a young age. And then again, it's funny how in a, in a generational house, you can learn from them and they learn from you. And it's just a cyclical thing that is yeah. just super cool to watch. Yeah. So. Yeah. You, you know, the, again, the sermon was just so timely on generational, mm-hmm. you know, what, what is it that we learn from our parents, good or bad, mm-hmm. that we are, yeah. you know, walking in now? And what is it that we want to instill in our children? Yeah. And holy moly, you know, it just, he said something in that sermon that it ripped the carpet out of, you know, like, I mean, I just... Mm-hmm. It was one of the most meaningful things. I even I even wrote it down because I wanted to make sure. When yeah. he said, you know, make today a pivotal day mm-hmm. as you commit to pointing those that you love most mm-hmm. to the one that loves them the most. That was my favorite quote too. That was, that was my mom. Through it all, she was pointing us towards mm-hmm. Jesus because she loved us that much. Yeah. That's what, like, I've had to make some really hard decisions in the last couple of years mm-hmm. and that was the basis for it. And when he said those words, the decisions that I have made are to ensure that my kids have the best opportunity that mm-hmm. they can yeah. to be good, godly men and yeah. to love Jesus. Yeah. And that that's the example I want to set for them mm-hmm. because that's the example that my mom set for me. Yeah. 
you know, and we can just, I mean, that's the best we can do as parents, right? Mm-hmm. Like, <laughs> yeah, seriously. and the pressure is fierce, but we, we have a great, great, great Lord that is mm-hmm. carrying us through that. So one sister, one sister, yeah. the two, two girls. And it's funny. Did you know that I knew your sister before I knew you? I had no idea. We were in a life group together. Really? Yes. Yeah. I would okay. Never, this is, I would never have yeah, guessed exactly. that. Yeah, exactly. So Marie and I were brand new. This is probably like 2010, 2011. We're starting to get brand new. We're starting new. We're volunteering in high school ministry. We start to get in a group with Jeremy Redman. So with Jeremy Redman brought, um, I'm going to go blank on names, Katie and Tyler Brown. Yes. In a life group. And yes. then your sister and your brother-in-law. Really? We're in this group together. So, would I mean, it have been because of Jen Robinette, maybe, and Jamie Smith? Uh, yes, uh, no, but th- I know they were friends. Yes, but okay. no, we weren't in that life group together. But it was crazy because they I mean they're probably ten years older than me, I yeah. would think. But that was just a cool life experience because we yeah. were these young twenty-year-olds. You know, the Redmonds are having kids. Um, you know, and then just and it was funny because we sat in Tyler Brown's loft apartment that he had yeah. above like that barn thing that they had. And it was just really weird sitting in it, basically their bedroom slash living room <laughs> of John's sister. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. I, it's no, a I get weird it. Thing. Yes. But it's funny that I knew Jen before I knew you. Yeah. And, um, and now, so to, grew up with one sister, two girls. Yeah. Now you have two boys. I do. Yeah. What's that like having just, cause you seem like, and this is, uh, hopefully this is, the, uh, this is positive. You seem like a good boy mom. Oh, well, I think you, you kind of have to adapt, right? <laughs> yep. <laughs> and thankfully I've had, um, I've had two incredible step kiddos for a mm-hmm, long time mm-hmm. as well. So, um, and I a little practice. There yes. Too. They yeah. really laid some great groundwork for me mm-hmm. in terms of, um, not being total newbie, mm-hmm. but you also have to remember, or you, you don't have to remember this because mm-hmm. you might not know this, but, um, I was eight months pregnant with my Mm-hmm. first Graham when my mm-hmm. mom passed away. Mm-hmm. So one of the most humbling experiences, and that's really what I talked about in the kept um, discussion, but is becoming a mom mm-hmm. without a mom mm-hmm. while you're grieving your mom. I mean, you come out of that mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. either knowing how to fly or, you know, yeah. just so it really was. I yeah. Graham, Graham, I, he held such a place in my heart because we grew up together, I feel mm-hmm. like, mm-hmm. Um, you know, and he kids are amazing in that way. But yeah, boys, I'm so thankful I'm a boy mom because <laughs> they are, I consider mm-hmm. them to be just like, you know, what's going on with them. Yeah. Like they, yeah. you know, like they're not sneaky. Yeah. They're not hiding things like yeah. they're jumping the right off the there. back of couches mm-hmm. and, you know, like it's, mm-hmm. but man, boys. It's really fun. Maria, because I mean, we had the, you know, Amelia and Everly for gosh, uh, yes. six, uh, five years before the twins came along yeah. and before Quincy came along. Yeah. And it's just crazy because she, I mean, she wasn't with the girls that much of like, let's get on the ground and play and like go like, but yeah. she is with the boys. Yeah. And it's funny to see her, just the difference, the, how, how she's nurturing with both equally, yeah. but, but, but in different ways. There's and, something about and it. And <laughs> the boys I got, they're mama's boys. They oh. really are. <laughs> I, mean, I think all yeah. arguably I, yeah. 99% yeah. of boys are mama's boys. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think so too. Yeah. I'm okay with it. Honestly. Let's talk about, go, go back a little bit. Yeah. Um, talk about your mom. Uh, I know this, she's the biggest that we've been talking about, but, um, cause it was, cause my dad was battling cancer Yes, and, and he was able to see Amelia yeah. and that was kind of, I mean, he passed, I think a year after she was born. Yeah. Um, and it was, I mean, we got those pictures, but he was so sickly in so mm. many of those mm-hmm. newborn pictures with Amelia, yep. but yet he knew his time was coming to an end yeah. because every time he was around little precious baby Amelia, he would just start weeping Yeah. because it's just, because when you're around that new life and maybe when you know your life on this earth yeah. is ending and you're about to see powerful. It, yeah. Yeah. And, and again, it was that point of dad's life was so, cause he did, I, he really lived his faith out in those last couple of years to yeah. an extent that I didn't see growing up as much in, in the home, but it was, it's, it's, it's weird how cancer, it just, the wounds that you maybe have throughout a lifetime, cancer just rips them all open mm-hmm. at one time mm-hmm. and you have to kind of, okay, assess which wounds am I going to deal with first? Yeah. And then it maybe takes a couple of years for those to heal back up and, and then you're a stronger person if you deal with those correctly. Yeah. So talk a little bit more about being a mom without having a mom. Yeah. You know, somebody asked me recently, they said, um, you know, I just, I'm having a tough time understanding. It was actually a client. They said, Mm -hmm. why do you do, why is it that you are so positive? Mm -hmm. Why do you choose Mm -hmm. to be positive about everything? And I said, why not? Mm -hmm. You know, like 
the obvious answer is my faith has given me the opportunity to be positive, mm-hmm. but I also believe you should choose to be positive. And it really has been lots of choices that I've made along the way. Yeah. Losing my mom, you know, I, I said this in the kept thing, but just a really cool example of my mom and her character. When, when I was passing away, Dr. Asbury was my um, OB and he let us borrow a Doppler so that she could hear the heartbeat, oh. you know, like mm-hmm. as she was passing away. And mm-hmm. my sister, she was an ICU nurse um, mm-hmm. around that time. And so, she, you know, she, we would let her listen to Graham's heartbeat at any time. And, and at one point, all her sisters had flown in from California and we were, you know, just having a moment. We're all boohooing and, you know, because we knew the time was getting pretty mm-hmm. close. And um, it was actually one of the last things I remember her saying out loud is mm-hmm. that, the first thing that she was going to do when she got to heaven was mm-hmm. to get in line for guardian angel school because <laughs> she was going to be Graham's guardian angel. <laughs> mm-hmm. And she was just that, that type of person. Yeah. And so I think the reason why I brought up that comment about being positive is because I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that if my mom were still here, I would not be a 10th of the mother mm. that I am or mm. person that I am. Mm. I had to, like I had to, Mm -hmm. I looked at that child the first time they laid him in my arms and thought, okay, kid, you got to grow up. Mm -hmm. Me, not him. (laughs) (laughs) Like I became a Christian woman because my mom wasn't here. She had laid the groundwork for me to follow, but I would have just relied on her. I would have relied on her to be the amazing grandma she would have been. I wouldn't have been, and I don't say that lightly. And it's not, I'm not proud of that. But that's uh, hard to say. Uh, but yeah, that's yeah. yeah Cause you're saying you're w- by saying that you're like, okay, you know, my, you know, my boys won't have a, have the grandma that yeah. they have, but you're learning. Yeah, gosh. And Jared mm-hmm. also, you know, what you said about how sickly he was, it wasn't mm-hmm. until a couple of years ago where I was like, cause I had a lot, you know, like if I really mm-hmm. let myself sit with it, I had anger that she wasn't there Yeah, with her even, you yeah. know, like how are you gotta be kidding me? All you've ever wanted was grandbabies. Mm-hmm. Finally, you know, mm-hmm. like, and, and that's a whole nother emotion to go down. But, you know, the idea of what if she had made it until mm-hmm. he was here and couldn't even hold him. Yeah. Oh, that's worse. You yeah. know, like cancer is an awful, 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 awful thing. But we had to make decisions to see the positive, you know, and that we, if, if we do our jobs well mm-hmm. as parents and Graham and Ace and Reagan and Liam, if they grow up to be good Christians and they Mm -hmm. have a relationship with Jesus, they'll meet her. They'll Mm -hmm. be with her in Mm -hmm. her healthy body. Exactly. Yeah. And And that's what it's all about. Relationships. You know, like, yeah. Yeah. And guys, I mean, speaking on the positivity thing, it's positive. The word positivity almost gets a bad rep. It does. Because it's like, oh, then you're not genuine about your stuff. Because I, I, and I was in the concierge program, I had a a supervisor that I would call NutraSweet because she had artificial sweetener. (laughs) Um, because again, lover, lover, but like you that. could, you could tell she was mustering something <laughs> yep. up to the clients to be super positive because yeah. behind when the door would close, she, Oh God, you know? Yeah. And so, but imagine the testimony if Christians could be positive and it's a positivity that even in the yes. circumstances. And again, you're not, you're not, you're just shutting your eyes to all the negativity. Exactly. You're accepting what the, what's going on in your life, but yet you're choosing to be positive choosing. despite that. Choosing. And that is a big testimony, especially to our world today. You're not kidding. So yeah, it's, I'm, I consider myself to be a realist. I've yeah. been, I've been through it. A I've positive had heartache. Realist. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I believe in, okay, this is what we have in front of us. And just like with the build, like just with us expanding the church and all this, mm-hmm. this is what we have in front of us. And this is what we're going to choose to yeah. do. Yeah. We are going to choose mm-hmm. to have faith. Mm-hmm. We are going to choose positivity. We are going to mm-hmm. choose to find the good in this. Yeah. 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 It's too much. So many times we don't want to make that choice and it really is a choice for us. Mm-hmm. And a lot of times we don't make that choice our own. Like you said, I mean, if, if, if Marsha still wasn't here, maybe you wouldn't have made those choices because you would just sort of relied on her yeah. a lot more. Yeah. And that's, that's, gosh, we could probably do a whole <laughs> podcast on enabling in our faith. <laughs> oh, um, that's a- because again, and that's, and that's a hard thing as a, as a parent, I never want to enable my kids where I can give them faith, but it's not again, their own faith. Right. And I think a 
lot of parents can do that where they almost micromanage or the whole helicopter term. Yep. And we could do that in our faith too. Like, no, you need to think this way. You need to do that way. You need to read the Bible this way. It's like, no, God's maybe working in a different yep. way in their life. Cause you know, I mean, there's a big difference between Graham and Ace yeah, well, yeah. and their, their faith is going to be completely different. And the way they approach God in the relationship with him, it's the same God. He is the same God, but yeah. yet they're going to have a different relationship. It's just who we are yeah. and what we're made for. So, yeah, man, I we can keep that. going. <laughs> I, so we're going to switch gears slightly in the fact that we'll take a quick pause, uh, let you take a breather, and then we'll come right back into it with the question that we ask all of our guests on the Central Weekly. How has God been working in your life lately? Get ready. Okay. Okay. I'm looking forward okay, to it. We're going to hit pause right now. And we're back to wrap up our conversation with Shauna Bullard, and we're going to ask her, are you ready? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Shauna, how has God been working in your life lately? You know, I think in the last couple months, God has just really been wrapping his arms around me in terms of helping me to see the difference between um, the words and the feelings and the reality of lonely versus alone. And I think that this is something that a lot of us deal with, um, that we can feel lonely even if we are in the middle of the 11 o'clock service at Central mm -hmm. and we are surrounded by our family and by people that we have been in small group with. Mm -hmm. um, we can feel lonely in those moments. We can feel lonely if we've got really hard <laughs> we've got really hard things going on. Like the Bible tells us though, and what I think that God has been doing in my life is teaching me that I am never alone. Yeah. And the idea that he is with us always. And the idea that Jesus is not just this, you know, being that we pray to, that he is mm. your best friend and yeah. that you can talk to him anytime about anything and you can be lonely and that's okay, but you're never alone. Yeah. And learning to, um, to really just immerse myself. I think that this God in my life has been teaching me through lessons he has been teaching me through helping me to listen mm. and the word less mm. has been big for me lately. Mm -hmm. Like, cause that helps me to mm -hmm. listen yeah. and to hear the lessons. Yeah. So that's where I'm at. The difference between being alone, being mm. lonely, loving, all, you know what? It's really just all L words, really. Right there. Yeah. <laughs> Sermon from Sean Buller. There we go. The three L's. It's not L's. got an L. I'm not into yeah. it, okay? That's really, yeah. yeah. Gosh, and that it's funny because we're looking at, uh, af so after John's done with boats, we're going to go into summer school, and I've got tasks to do the first one, and I'm really thinking that my lesson for for the summer series that we're calling just uh, summer school yeah. is shut your mouth. Uh-oh. Yes. Because for me, that from is a father. so, gosh, yes. <laughs> and it's funny here, I'm going to tell you about how you need to close your mouth. Yes. <laughs> but I mean, I heard that so often. I know that's been a thing in my relationship with Maria is, hey, if you're just quiet and you really listen to me, you're going to get a lot out of this conversation right yeah. now. That's with her. Oh, listening with God is, is the same way. Yes. It's how, I mean, I do that so often is, okay, this is my quiet time. I've set this aside a time for you, God. Okay. Okay. I, I need this and this, and I'm going to read this and this, I'm going to say, do this and this, but gosh, sometimes I just have to be quiet. Yeah. And, and then not also filling in that quiet space with what you need to be said. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Listening is the, I think the uh, biggest opportunity I have for growth. I'm the person that is just, I have to fill that quiet spot. Yeah. And same, gosh. same. I think so many of us are that way yeah. too. Yep. We can get really good at the talking part. We can get really good at praying and we can get really mm -hmm. good at telling Jesus what we need and what's going on and what we're struggling with and what we're thankful for and you know, what it is that we're sorry mm -hmm. for and all these things. But when it comes to trying to hear what he's saying back. Yeah. And I think full circle moment here, your mom was really good at listening. Oh, my life. Um, and I, I mean, really good advice too, but people came to her because they, she, they felt listened to. Yeah. And I think again, us as Christians in this world, if we're positive too, but yet we're a listening ear in a good way, not a listening ear just to hear somebody, you know, be, you know, mean and, and grumbly all the time, yeah. but a listening ear to say, I hear you. And I mean, that's going to change relationships with people. Yeah. It deepens so, them. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, Shauna, good job. Hey, this you is know really what? good. Woo. I think, okay. I, again, I always say this to good guests. I'm, we're going to have to have you back. Uh, <laughs> but it's, I just, I really appreciated hearing your point of view 
because I knew your mom was going to be a big topic because yeah. she shaped you so much. But to hear your point of view too of what God is leading you to right now, because um, like you said, the last couple of years haven't been a joy ride. Oh, yeah. um, but still, He is faithful and He's still there for you. Yeah. So you are not alone. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for letting us listen in hey. to what Ooh. God is doing in Shauna's life. I like what you did there. Listen in. And now, and now, there we go. <laughs> Thanks so much, Shauna. All right, my pleasure. And we're back. That was a great conversation with Shauna Bullard. I mean, seriously, we just love Shauna. Proud of what mm-hmm. God has done in her, what she's allowed God to do through her, and um, just fully believe that there are great um, things in store for her life yet to yeah. come. And I'm going to put this out there. If there is a story that you or you think we should tell on the Central Weekly, email me. I could say no. Uh, Jared at centralnow.com because, again, we want to tell people stories in, around, and through the Central family. And Shauna just did a great job, and we're grateful for her. Next week, week two of The Boats, and we're looking at Jonah, tell his story, and we have another guest. I'm not going to reveal it yet. Oh, my. But it's a... uh, it's it's a gun. It's somebody's name. That's a gun. It's a gun. And it's a Remington. <laughs> I just said it. Okay. Nice, nice job. Yeah, thanks a lot. Bye, guys. Have a good week.